narcolepsy is a rare neurological disorder affecting an estimated 170,000 Americans. It can be difficult to detect, but it can take up to a decade or more just to diagnose. That's right, Montel. And while close to 50% of patients begin developing symptoms in their teenage years, narcolepsy may also be found in children. Symptoms may vary between people living with narcolepsy, but all of them experience excessive daytime sleepiness. Well, let's meet Lindsay. She was noticing changes in her child that left her searching for answers. When Noah started preschool at age four, he suddenly started taking naps every day. Next thing we knew, he was taking two to three hour long naps every single day. He would nap and if we would wake him up, he would wake up kind of upset and angry and need to go back to sleep. We also started noticing that at night he would have these dreams that it would almost be like he was awake and having conversations. So we would try to wake him up during it and he would, he would kind of wake up, but he couldn't tell that he was awake, so he would still think that he was in the dream. We really just didn't know what was going on with him. Dr. Chris Winter is a board-certified neurologist, clinician, and board-certified sleep specialist with over 30 years of clinical experience. Narcolepsy is a chronic neurological disorder that affects an individual's ability to maintain wakefulness or sleep, so it's really a disorder of state instability. The symptoms of narcolepsy include excessive daytime sleepiness, which is the cardinal symptom of narcolepsy and present in all patients who have narcolepsy. There are other symptoms that are supporting as well too, including disturbed nighttime sleep, hallucinations, sleep paralysis, and cataplexy. I don't think that I can overstate how profoundly that excessive daytime sleepiness can affect the patient. These are individuals that are trying to lead successful, productive lives, but they're constantly, no matter how much sleep they're getting, always wanting more and having very little control over that ability to maintain their wakefulness. And this can be incredibly debilitating. We went to our pediatrician to try to figure out what it was that we were seeing and what was causing it. We were referred out, which kind of began our journey of, you know, visiting various doctors and having numerous tests that were completed to rule out different diseases and disorders. It was incredibly frustrating. We had no idea what was happening, and the entire time it just felt like Noah was kind of slipping through the cracks, and no one could tell us what was wrong. Making the diagnosis of narcolepsy is challenging because while everybody has excessive daytime sleepiness, the appearance of these other supporting symptoms may be gradual or never happen at all. The symptoms of narcolepsy can often be misdiagnosed as many other disorders. Mood disorders, psychiatric disorders, epilepsy, there are several uh, diagnoses that often share elements of narcolepsy and create confusion in that diagnostic picture. There are many things that assist in the diagnosis of narcolepsy in children, which generally happens between those ages of seven to 25. It's sort of the school age years. That school environment is extremely important because there's that sort of evaluation that's happening when a child's in school. They're falling asleep in class. They're struggling to get their homework done. Their grades are dropping. There are behavioral changes that are happening. A lot of individuals, particularly children, tend to withdraw because of the narcolepsy. They're choosing sleep over other activities. They used to like to play soccer, now they just want to go home and take a nap. Finding qualified sleep specialists who understand the difficulty of this diagnosis, I think is really key to helping children deal with this lifelong problem. So eventually we were referred to a qualified sleep specialist and Noah underwent a sleep study the findings from that study suggested narcolepsy. Eventually, we did go back and have a second sleep study and multiple sleep latency tests, and at that time, he was confirmed to have narcolepsy. Pretty much everything at home changed. So we were on a very rigid schedule. 
for nap times and times to wake up in the morning and times to go to bed at night. Because if he didn't, the next day would be really rough for him. We had to make sure his teachers were aware of his needs. Around that same time, I attended a narcolepsy conference. I was able to meet with other families who'd gone through the same thing. I was able to meet with teenagers to kind of get their perspective on what is it like dealing with narcolepsy as a teenager. So being able to talk to all of these individuals that were you know, in these different stages of life was so beneficial to us. Eventually, I ended up co-founding an organization called Sleep Consortium to help bring awareness as well as to help educate other parents that are kind of in the same spot I was. So my advice would be create a strong and educated social support network for patients. And that often involves a significant amount of education. I need to, the parent needs to educate the teachers and the people in the patient's life that are dealing with the individual but may not necessarily understand what narcolepsy entails. There's just a real negativity around sleepiness in our culture. People who fall asleep are lazy, they don't care, they're somehow insubordinate, and we really need to remove these kinds of feelings we have about sleepiness. For these patients, finding that qualified sleep specialist to begin the process of education and understanding the disease state is critical because from that flows the creation of the social network and the management details that will help this individual lead their best life going forward. Noah's 15 now, he's in high school. High school in general is a scary time, but high school with narcolepsy? Oh, that just adds a whole other dimension. You've gotta still find time for a nap. You've gotta figure out what you missed from class while you were asleep. He's still on a very strict routine. You know, he still has a bedtime at night that's quite early for a high schooler. So that piece hasn't changed too much for him. You know, he's always gonna have that very strict schedule that he has to follow because he knows that he does better. My goal has been and always will be to continue learning more so that as we pivot and we make these major life changes for him, that he's as prepared as he can be for them. I've been living with this sleeping disorder for a long time. It's not always been the easiest to go through, but I've been managing it pretty well. If I had any advice, I would say not to give up, even with a disorder, because nothing's impossible. For more information on narcolepsy, talk to your healthcare provider and visit sleepconsortium.org. And if you missed any part of the segment today, you can find it in our website, thebalancingact.com.